<laughs> All right. Well, welcome everybody uh, to True Mental Health, another episode. Welcome on Instagram. Welcome on Facebook. I'm Crystal, and this is Dr. Janine Craft. Yes, but I'm like, okay. <laughs> the side, that side, and up, please, down. <laughs> like ahead of time, forgive me for us. Like we're just fried and tired and happy to be here. And so yes. we have this. I got. I we want to start today's show with something that I am going to read to you. It's a question that somebody sent in in another group that I'm a part of. But I get it's really relevant to where a lot of us are right now. And so I will start us off with her question. Cool. You would think I would be ready for this. Two seconds here. <laughs> we just talked about it. <laughs> oh my God, what is happening? All right, it's coming, it's coming. So this lady is, um, okay, here. So I, I did a video, she was responding to it and she's like, look, I'm about 75 days into the 30 by 30 that's on your website. So for those of you guys that don't know, I have, um, you can go to infinitebeingschool.com and you get access to a free digital course and an introduction to the access tools and this really cool 30 day self-guided challenge. So anyway, she's doing that. So good. And she said, okay, and what would it take for me to be willing to live the energy of what I'd like my life to be so it can show up for me. She goes, well, if it takes mandates and lockdowns, I live in Quebec, to close my 16 year medical equipment business and sell my possessions, including my beautiful magical home in the next two months, I gather it's working. <laughs> A complete 180. And this was what I was aware of a lot of us are facing right now. Uh, so my question is, how do I navigate this major shift without judging myself? Judgments such as I'm too old, this is irresponsible, where will you live? Mexico is dangerous for a single single woman. Mm -hmm. How do I do this? And so what I was, we were looking at our title and I realized as I was reading this to us that, you know, both you and I have done complete 180s in our life. Multiple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, I mean, like, how do I navigate this major shift without judging myself? I mean, what... Like you, you made a total pivot from being a therapist into doing that online and coaching. Yeah. And now you're, you're adding and pivoting again and becoming a certified facilitator. Like, I don't know. How would you talk about this just in the moment? Yeah. The first thing that came up for me was when I was looking to leave my nine to five and move on from therapist to coach, um, that I just had to spend some time in the energy myself before I started telling people what I was doing, mm -hmm. like before it would create more wobble in my world, I wanted to get really secure in that. Um, and so I just kept it to myself for a while because I knew on paper it didn't look right or it didn't make sense. It looked irresponsible, right? I'm leaving yeah. a job that was going to potentially pay my multiple six figure student loans. You know, I've obviously spent a lot on this doctoral degree. Um, and so that's where I was like, I just need to be sure about this myself so that the judgment or if anyone had a point of view about it, I was secure. You were less exposed to yes. the vocalized judgments. Yeah, yeah that, I mean, there's a fun phrase that goes just for you, just for fun. Don't tell anyone, you know, like, so I love that. Yeah. Um, and I, God, I've done so many 180s, like just, I mean, I just recently personally moved to a totally different country. I was living in Canada. I grew up in the States. Then I moved to Canada, which was a huge change, believe it or not. And then uh, moved to Panama, which is massive. And that's just two of the, you know, massive changes. But um, how do I do this without judging myself? I guess, I mean, one of the first things I would say is you got to be willing to give yourself a lot of space for the change because there's a lot of, I mean, you know, in just what she wrote, and I get this is where a lot of people are at. Like, you know, I've, I had a business for 16 years. I've lived yeah. in this home for a long time. Like you're about to change where you've been residing and functioning from for years. So your life is, you're not going to have any reference points. And that's the thing that um, I think is so unnerving about a 180 shift is that you don't have any reference points for what it is you're choosing next. Even if you kind of have a sense of where you're going. Like, let's say she chooses to go to Mexico, for example. Um, that doesn't mean she's got any experience in Mexico or she's like, you know, you've never chosen that before. So you don't have reference points for what it's going to be like or what to expect or any of that. Uh, so for me, it's been being willing to give myself a lot of space in the mm. process because, and I never, I always forget, like I'm always more impatient with myself than, you know, 
Like, why don't I know Spanish yet? I've been here four months. Yeah. <laughs> Can you elaborate on that? Because like you say space and I'm like, ooh, yeah, energetically, I think I know it. But it's like, what does that mean pragmatically for folks? Well, I'll give you an example. When I first moved to Canada, I moved to Ontario and uh, Toronto, more specifically, the Toronto area, which if you've ever been to Canada, is like there's Toronto, there's Lake, there's Toronto, and then there's the area. <laughs> like it sprawls out from the lake. So Toronto, because of its location and how it works and functions as a city, it has a 16 lane highway. Oh, wow. In and out of the city. I've never seen anything like it in the United States and they have a lot of highways. So I got there and I love to drive, but I saw this highway and I was like, Ugh. and so I had to learn that because the way things exited and got off this highway, you had to know like three miles before you were going to exit to exit. There was all these new things. And on top of that, when I first moved there, I got an agent for acting. I was pursuing acting. So I got an agent, which was cool. Got some headshots, which meant that I had to drive from surrounding Toronto to downtown Toronto, like every time I got an audition. Well, I grew up in the middle of the United States, which has a lot of space, like it's a big mm -hmm. country. Mm -hmm. And so we didn't have, even though my city was probably, I don't know, 600,000 people, it wasn't very dense. And so I didn't grow up having to deal with downtown condensed, you know, one way streets and don't park there and all the different things that go with downtowns. So it was a, it was an immense combination of new things. Well, when I, but here was me, like I, I can do anything. And like, I've driven all, I've driven since I was 16, I can drive a standard. So I'm coming in with like all this, you know, like machismo about driving. So the first, I don't know, the first time I did it, it was, um, um, you know, I got turned around. Like, I mean, I got so lost. And the thing on this highway was like, if you got lost, you were literally on the thing for you're another really hour. Lost, yeah. Like, yeah, you're really lost. <laughs> and then, and then, and then finally got to downtown. And then when I got downtown, I got so turned around and it's all these one way streets. And then I, you know, so it was a mess and I was late. So got home from that. And I realized like, if I'm going to be doing this, I'm probably going to have to build into my equation two hours to be lost and turn around because I hadn't, mm -hmm. I had literally been like, okay, I have an appointment at one and I got on Google, Google maps and Google maps says I can get there in an hour and okay, I'll leave with an hour of time. But in truth, I needed like two and a half hours because it was going to take me a minute to like yeah. learn while I was doing things. And so that's really what I mean by giving yourself space. Um, and, and I mean, like for me, an English speaker moving to a Latin American country, for example, I mean, the amount of space I need to give myself for new energies, new dynamics, you know, uh, Andres basically handling everything instead of me being able to go out and do it because of the language. I mean, it was so many different things. So there was more times than not that I had to just like relax and allow it to be different. Relax and allow it to yeah. be different. There's a lot of that in big changes. Yeah, I love that. I was just thinking about like the judgment piece in general yeah. and how like psychology would say, well, you need to like reframe your thoughts about it or challenge the thoughts that come up. That's like the psychology perspective. And so, but I'm like, what else is possible? What would be more ease for folks when those personal judgments are coming up, especially from like an access consciousness perspective? Well, let me ask you, what does that mean challenge your points of view from like, what do you? Well, it means that all like kind of already it's like makes the point of view really solid, significant, relevant, real. Like if your point of view is, um, oh, God, like what, what was one of the here's some points yeah. of view she has here. I'll, yeah, I'm too old. This is irresponsible. Um, where will you live if you sell your house? Um, well, if you go to Mexico, Mexico is too dangerous for a single woman. So what would challenging those be like? So like, okay, so the free frame would be like for I'm too old, it would be like, oh, well, you know, people can start changes or choose changes at any time of their life. That would be the reframe. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So it's like you're, yeah, okay. And then what do you do with that? So you've reframed it, then now what? Then you like make yourself believe it. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> like put a lot of attention to it. It's like reframe the thought, but it's like, it's kind yeah. of like that internal system already is like bullshit. That's not, that's not, I don't buy into that kind of thing. So it's like, what is really yeah. going to work here when those personal internal judgments are coming up? Yeah. Well, I personally could never make myself believe anything that I knew I was bullshitting myself about. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. I think is something to sit with and just kind of acknowledge of like, can you, 
I mean, how successful are you if you guys are watching this at bullshitting yourself? You, you can't. And I remember, anyway, I'll grab a trail on that. Too bad if I go that direction. But I was like, so, <laughs> um, well, okay. So access consciousness talks about that, that everything is just an interesting point of view. Like what if, what if every single thing that comes into your mind, every single thing that you feel, every single thing that you emote is just interesting, you know, mm -hmm. now it's not like you hear that information and then all of a sudden you can walk out into your life and you're just like being right. an interesting point of view. That's not like that. You know, they give you like, we give you a tool to start to use in order to obtain that as a possibility in your world. Because in truth, when you're facing something new, like you are facing a bunch of points of view, you're facing a bunch of judgments. What are you going to be with them? So, so what this tool does, and if you guys want it, I mean, pardon me, and you go to infinitebeingschool.com, you're going to get back to basics, which has mm. a video on this. So, so yeah. you can go there. Um, but anyway, so it's like, so you take every point of view and like one of hers, for example, or I'm too old. Mm -hmm. Interesting point of view. I have this point of view. Interesting point of view. I have this point of view. Interesting point of view. I have this point of view. And so what you're doing with that is you're getting present with the energy of the point of view because it does have it. And then you're changing the energy of the point of view with that tool and so what will tend to occur it, when you're being the tool anyway, not when you're yeah. just like saying it, it will it will shift it. And so the solid what, what was made solid and real about that point of view dissipates literally. So yeah. I'm really sensing that that is, that's like where the missing link is with yeah. psychology, where it's like psychology speaking about, you know, obviously already making it solid and real. And then here's this other perspective that would be lighter and and probably create more ease. But if we're not addressing the under, undertone of the energy, it's kind of like, it feels like this forced right turn. And I sense that that's why my body would go into some resistance about it versus the interesting point of view just really dissipates it for me. It's yeah. Really and as you're talking, what I'm getting is like, it's, it's really the difference between doing something and being something. Mm-hmm. Now you can also just do interesting point of view and that's when you're going to find it doesn't work. Yeah. So that's like probably a whole other video, but it is the difference. So like when you reframe your point of view and you're like, well, what if you tried on this point of view and you don't really believe yourself It's because you're like doing the point of view rather than being it, you know, what would it be like to be? Yeah. I mean, what is old? Okay, cool. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Like in neuro-linguistic programming, they talk about be, do, have, like in order to change your reality. And in a sense, I mean, you know, access really does function from a lot of that as well, which yeah, is just like, yeah. you have to energetically be, be it, and then you'll be inspired to take the action that's kind of congruent with that. And then you'll have a different reality. And right. so that's kind of where I sense it's like almost psychology jumps straight to doing yeah. um, that's missing the B part. The other thing that I'm getting is coming up though here is like it, when judgments like that come up, it's like, what's the energy behind them? And when I'm looking at what she's written here, it's like, there's a lot of that energy of fear and, mm -hmm. and doubt. And, and I think it's always worth mentioning, like when you are making a big change, those energies are probably going to be there. Like that's very common. It's just very common for them to be there. They may or may not, maybe you're different. Um, but I, there's a couple things to really get. It's like fear and excitement physiologically, show up the same in your body. So when you are facing a huge pivot, like a huge change, that's can be occurring. So, you know, if you're feeling fear, you can ask, am I afraid or am I excited? It's sometimes I have a hard time admitting that to myself that I'm actually excited, but anyway, you can play with that. But it, the other thing to get and like with all these points of view and the energy underneath them is that if it's fear and doubt underneath them, they are only, they are there to distract you. That's their whole purpose is to distract you. They're called distractor implants. So, um, yeah, I think that's worth mentioning because you can also look at, am I actually afraid? Am I actually doubting myself or do I know? Cause that's, I think to me, presence is the thing presence with what's coming up as, are you real? When you're present with something and go, are you actually real? Is this really true? Not from doubt, but like, okay, is it really true that I can't handle myself in Mexico? Yes or no. You know, mm -hmm. when you get present with it, that's actually what gives you access to the power that you are underneath it. But we just take ourselves out of presence with doubting ourselves and going into fear and all these points of view. And it's pretty automatic too. Like it just occurs. And so we just like get washed away in that instead of really sitting ourselves down and going, wait a second, what's really true here? Is it true that I can't handle this? Is it even true that, you know, I'm actually too old? What does that mean? Yeah. 
and starting to break it apart, starting to break apart the insanity for yourself instead of going into this like, you know, and I'm not saying that's what she was doing, but yeah, I've seen. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking how like in, it took me years to like want to make the leap or to choose to make the leap to from my nine to five to coaching and just how like I was really stuck in the fear and the doubt of like, how am I going to pay off my student loans or how am I going to handle this or or doubting, you know, well, I thought psychology was my thing. It was my new passion and my purpose. And so then I was, all those things came up until I got so uncomfortable or just so frustrated with choosing the same thing that it was kind of like, I had no other choice in my, in my perspective. It was just like, I'm choosing this. I don't even care anymore. Like, and I'm getting after speaking to a lot of folks this weekend and in my taster where people are just, they're like, they're done. They're ready to choose it. But then there's something that's still, uh, uh, that's just like kind of take stopping from just taking that next step or they're like in the process of taking it and all this stuff is coming up. Well, I think that's worth mentioning is like when you are looking at a bigger choice, all the stuff comes up. That's when all the stuff comes up. Mm-hmm. So that's just to and, and I, you know, when you've when you function a long time from like, well, if stuff comes up, that's a sign I shouldn't choose it. That's where you start to really get tripped up because I've seen people do that. I'm like, well, if there's stuff coming up, maybe I shouldn't choose it. And so then we spin ourselves out with doubt. It's recognizing that when you're about to make a choice bigger than you've made before or a choice that's really going to transform your reality or transform your life, that's when the stuff comes up because it yeah. the stuff that you are secretly functioning from that if you continue to function from will keep you from what you can choose will come up for you to choose around. And so that's like that's that pivotal moment where so many times we will either step in and step around, you know, the whatever it is, or we will use that as the reason to stay where we are. And, and I've done both, you know, Mm -hmm. I've done both. I I personally forced my own hand. I have in the past forced my own hand many times via money, you know? So it's like, well, I need the money. So, you know, never mind that I'm afraid. (laughs) (laughs) I'm choosing as I have to. Okay. So is there also this piece of like, once you choose, then you're aware of like this future timeline that just opened up. Like you just opened up a huge new new world that you have this awareness, but then we're not taught that we got this huge download of like now all these other possibilities and that could be contributing to like the fear and doubt process. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot. Yeah. Well, I would say that comes like after your, well, there's two times that occurs. So when you're looking at a choice, you're going to get a huge download of what it will change for you. But Mm. downloads don't occur. They don't even necessarily occur in pictures. They're just this surge of information, energy. And because we never talk about them, I mean, I've never heard them talked about outside of access consciousness. It's like, so we don't talk about it. We don't acknowledge that we're aware. Um, We many times will misidentify that as overwhelm or I don't know. And we'll use that surge as a reason to sort of back away instead of like receiving it and going, okay, cool. Wow. That's, that's a lot, for example. So it will occur when you're looking at a choice. And then when you've chosen that bigger thing, something else will occur. Like there will be that another download or swoosh or, you know, it's so different for all of us. But like, for me, it can be this like, or, or (laughs) of energy that is, is the awareness of the futures I just created. And, you know, for Mm. me personally, I, I had to teach myself to acknowledge futures I'd created by choices I had made because who talks about that? Yes. And if I hadn't acknowledged that the choice I just made changed all the futures, then I'd feel really, you know, screwed. I'd feel really fucked up. Like I would need, you know, assistance bars. <laughs> so, and, and Dane here, one of the co-creators of Access talks about that more than I hear anybody else talking about it. How when you've really chosen beyond what you've ever chosen before and you don't acknowledge it, that's when you can like, your world can feel like it's caving in. Yeah. So I think it's had a lot of that this year <laughs> where you're yeah. like, you're like, have you acknowledged how many, you know, future realities you've changed and how many yeah. now other people you will impact. Yeah. And just, I'm like, yeah. no, I'm just kind of in the trees. I'm like yeah. in just like step-by-step, step, just not even acknowledging that piece. And I just kept getting how that, you know, like kind of intensity in the body is awareness unacknowledged. And I just keep getting that at like greater, greater levels. 
Yeah, yeah. And and so for you guys that are in it and you're choosing and if you felt really screwed up after you've chosen, you can just ask, did I did I pause to acknowledge what I'd chosen? Did I pause to acknowledge what that choice created? And if you get that you didn't, you can just like, I mean, you could literally just pause and really like look at like, and when I say look at it, I mean, be with it, be with what you chose, mm-hmm. like really look at it, be with it. Um, and really get a sense of how much changed in the world from your choices. We don't get, we don't get that our choices change the world somewhere. Yeah. Even those of us that are out there influencing and, you know, creating don't get it. And cause you're just being you and you're just doing kind of what comes naturally. Like I'm an obsessive compulsive creator. So if I didn't yeah, create, totally. I would die. So it's like, you know, I forget that that's changing the world. Um, so I forget where I was going with that, but like, um, well, just all the people you impact, right? I mean, I'll just yeah. get DMs where a, a couple recently have said like, oh my gosh, I was just at Access Global Bars Day because you talked about it on one story. And it's like, wow. I'm not even realizing that when it's like, I just spoke about something and then psh, there's all these other people where they changed the reality because they chose something else from something I said. Like, that's huge that we never acknowledge. Yeah. And and I mean, we're, we're so fast. And so we just keep going and keep going mm-hmm. and then we make ourselves wrong. And so you never the pause never happens. And, and so we, we, it's, you got to get that your choices change futures. And I mean, this lady um, here, I'm so grateful for her question. It's like, it doesn't matter if you are out there creating and whatever, it's like your choices create and change futures. So that's the thing you become aware of before you make the choice. And then after you make the choice in a really different way, because after you've made the choice, like you've just opened and changed multiple futures open new possibilities and so all that energetic information comes rushing in with no definition and no spreadsheet and no manual you know um so yeah (laughs) well and what keeps coming up is kind of as you've been talking throughout this episode is the space and i'm you know kind of what you said you've said it almost you know multiple times a second like taking the pause you know just to allow to acknowledge that or i notice when you say oh i'm getting a download and you just require a few seconds 10 seconds to just kind of allow the energy in you know and rather than making ourselves wrong for that or needing to fill space constantly yeah. just being an allowance of creating more of that or being intentional about allowing that in yeah, I, and I and I I guess it's important to mention too. Like you'll forget again. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> so, I guess it's also just important to get how you function, and that yeah. you're very likely just going to forget to do that. But I I've made it a. I mean, after massive like massive numbers of pivots over the last eight years, I have made so many different life pivots because I'm because I for, for me personally have really needed to discover what's true for me. Discover what I want my life to be like. So I needed to really go in a bunch of different directions to like get more information. Um, And some of you are are facing change because of what's occurring with the, you know, the vaccination scenarios and what's occurring in the world. And so we're all facing the change from different points of view. Uh, But, oh, I lost my train again. I was good, I was going somewhere. It's gone, the point is gone. (laughs) Well, I mean, kind of what you're saying in regards that like, we've never been faced with such collective change in the sense of like, there were these huge like mandates and all these sorts of things where people are kind of up against a wall of like, choose this or choose that. It's like now time to shit or get off the pot. Right. That old saying. And I kind of like, that's where I was at with my job. I was like, Oh, it's time. It's time to make the leap. Um, Once I got the awareness. Yeah. And, and I remember having that conversation with you and, and how you were really like you were at the time really attached to your job for all the reasons. And I was like, OK, cool. When you left, I didn't even know we weren't talking as much then. Yeah. But I was so. But but what I wanted to say about that to anybody watching is that if if what. Would you be willing to look at if you can trust you? If you need to leap, like really look at can I trust me if I'm going to choose to leap? Am I willing to trust me? Because, you know, if you haven't, some of you have a lot of experience leaping and some of you don't. So you're coming from different places. I have been kind of a leaper my whole life. So I've lived in that uncomfort of leaping a lot. Um, It hasn't made the leaps any less uncomfortable, but it has created this knowledge that if I leap, I'm going to create. I always know that about myself. Some of you may be facing that for the first time in, in this way. 
you got to look at, am I willing to trust myself with this? Because all of you know, the thing is about when you're facing a leap like that, you already have a sense of what you want to choose in regards to the leap. Whether or not you will choose it is the next thing. And what you'll choose after that is the next thing. But there is no figuring out the whole thing before you choose it. There's only mm-hmm. having a sense of it and then choosing it and, you know, landing on your feet and thinking on your, it's really not thinking on your feet. It's really more being on your feet um, and creating. So that's what, I mean, that's what I would look at with anything. Cause no matter what's going on in the world and yes, we are in an unprecedented time where, you know, it, we could have the point of view that our hand is being forced Mm. And in some regards, I would say that's true. In another regard, is it what you've been asking for showing up in a different way? Totally. Great question to ask. And if that's what's true, then what do you know? What can you trust about you? Um, What's, you know, Mm -hmm. what's really true for you? Well, and I was getting a lot of questions from folks around like, okay, well, I know what I want to choose, but it's like, how? How do I choose right. it? And I'm kind of like, well, you know, there is no reference point, kind of what you talked about earlier. There's no reference yeah. point for where you're going. And so it's like you're, you know, going down uncharted territory. So you're, it's not going to look like anything you know. And it's your unique path. No one can tell you exactly this step, then that step, then this step. It's like you're on a dark path with a flashlight and you can only see just like this little bit right in front of you. And you won't see more until you choose and move forward and then choose and move forward and keep working forward. Um, and so I, and for me in this process in this year, it's just, and I'm still working on that of like relaxing into this unknown, relaxing into what is the next step? What am I creating next? Um, and so that's, so where have you gotten with that? Cause I'm like, <laughs> tell me, how do I relax more in this so that I'm not like a stress ball the whole time? I would yeah. Really yeah. <laughs> well, I, I mean, Again, like give yourself some space with this because I mean, it's taken me nine years. No, that's not true. How old am I? 46. It's taken me 45 years to learn to relax. <laughs> I'm not even kidding, actually. Yeah. I was, you know, I was in, a, I was taking, I take classes all the time too. And I was in a class I don't know, last month and, you know, we were talking about coping mechanisms and um, mm-hmm. these other elements of what ties us up energetically when we've been through a lot of trauma. And I've been through a lot of trauma. And so there's a lot of, um, of those reflex, reflexive reactions that still occur for me yeah. <clears throat> and, and less and less all the time. But, you know, there's still, I still am handling a lot of those. And so relaxation is not necessarily my first choice all the time. A lot hasn't been most of the time and is growing all the time, but is still one of those things that I have to remind myself very consciously of. And, um, so I, I want to put that in there because, you, you know, you were, again, you got to look at where you're at and just you know be kind to you and go, OK, cool. I've, I've developed a lot of these coping mechanisms to handle all, all the havoc in my life. Yeah. And here I am now. And this is more havoc. OK, cool. I can go into coping with it, which I think a lot of people are choosing out of necessity or not knowing another way. Or I can really like lower all my barriers energetically which literally is as fast as that. Once you ask your barriers to lower, they lower. And I can go, okay, I can zoom out, take a drone's eye view and go, what's really true here? What, what can I choose? And I think all the things you teach to need to like the, you know, the tapping and the nervous system regulation, like all that stuff contributes to that. So it's like, get, yeah. take your pathway there. Yeah. Um, but get there like find the way to get there because from there you can create anything. And, and, you know, some days I have to do that. Like this morning I woke up at three in the morning and thing and thing and thing. And I got myself into this massive head crunch, you know, where you're like trying to figure something out and I could not seem to shake it. And I facilitate people about this all the time. So I'm like, okay. So I, you know, I like started walking and I started moving the energy and I literally just like forced myself to like push my head out and be Mm. more space and drop the topic for a while. So there's just all these different things that you can do, but it's like, do what you have to do to render yourself more space yeah. so that you can have a different position in the room, you know, take a different position with the topic, look at it a little different, zone out and really, um, and, and by doing that, becoming the creative source instead of the coping source of, of your life. 
Oh, oh I so, felt it. Just that lower, lowering your barriers just in that yeah. moment. I was like, oh, I'm already, I need to put a sticky note because that's just one that works so quickly too, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so you guys can use that. Um, Amy's in a shift. She's glad she found the show. I'm, she said, I'm in a shift and a shakeup that appears out of the blue. I'm sort of in a freeze frame, clearing your tips for moving out of that. Well, well, I mean, so where I start with folks is looking at nervous system regulation. So choosing that, like if you're, if your body is feeling totally frozen, what can you do to nurture your body rather than trying to think your way out of it? Start with just put on some music and just dance, shake it out and just literally move the energy out of your body so that you can get to the place where then maybe once you're a little stiller, you can lower your barriers and then start to ask some questions around it. That's, that's like the order I would take folks through. Um, and I'll give you my take on it. So um, when I get to that position, I am not willing to choose beyond what's just occurred mm -hmm. yet. Like when I'm in a freeze frame, I'm just recognizing like, I'm just not willing to choose beyond it. So one of the things I do is I indulge in the freeze frame. I just indulge in it. I'm like, okay, cool. Well, you can stay frozen as long as you want to. Knowing, here's what I know about me in the back of my head, that as long as I do, you know, if I allow myself the space, again, we're there, yeah. to be with what I'm choosing, that is eventually I'll get bored. And I think that's just something to get about yourself. It's like you don't change anything until you're bored with it. So it's like if you didn't have to change anything, if you could stay frozen forever, you know, what would that be like? And then the crazy thing about when you give yourself that kind of permission, you end up getting bored faster. So, and then from there, it's just like, well, time to create my life. What can I choose next? Yeah. The so, allowance is huge yeah. to, not, to get into judgment about it. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Well, there's another episode in the books. Thank oh you so much. Gosh. What are you inviting people to? What do you have? Don't you have a soiree yes. coming soon? Oh yeah. yeah. So starting tomorrow, <laughs> I'm opening the doors to all my memberships for 72 hours. So they're usually closed and we like open sporadically, but Tomorrow for three full days, we're opening all the memberships. So if you want to go to crystaljoycrawford.com slash 70, just go to my website. Right, yeah. <laughs> go to my website. Right. Go to I'm in all of them. <laughs> yeah, infinitebeingschool.com will take you there. Um, yes. yes. And you've got stuff. Yes, I have a three-part telecall series based on a lot of what we talked about called The Courage to Choose. It's going to be the 27th, 20th, 29th, um, and all about choosing past the fear, judgment, and scarcity. So come join us. It's a party. Yes. It's a soiree. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, All right. thank you guys. And thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye.